Hey guys, welcome to another reading video. Um, at the top of your paper, let's go ahead and put reading 4-13-20. Reading and then today's date. And remember at any time during the video, you can pause it and you can take as long as you need to to write things down, okay? Now, the book we're reading today is called Busy Beaver. And remember, when we're reading books, you need to think about all the things that we could possibly be going over at the end. Remember, sometimes we talk about the setting. So while you're reading, make sure you're looking at those pictures and thinking of where the setting might be. If it's outside, inside, in the woods, at a pool, at school, make sure you think about that stuff. And also remember to try to identify who the main character is and if there even is one. Um, and always think about what the character's problems are, what they're doing to other characters, and stuff like that, okay? So let's go ahead and start reading. All right, here we go. So the title of the story is The Busy Beaver, and it's by Nicholas Oldland. Awesome. All right, and remember the author, Nicholas Oldland, is the one who wrote all the words in here. And it looks like he also was the illustrator. See, his name is on here twice. That's cool. He's by the author and illustrator. Cool. All right. There once was a beaver who was so busy that he didn't always think things through. This beaver's carelessness was becoming a problem. His dams leaked and he always made a mess of the forest. He left trees half chewed and worse, he failed more than he needed. Perhaps, worst of all, the beaver went about his work with so little thought that a tree landed right on top of a bear. And once he even chewed a moose's leg thinking it was a tree, the beaver was just that careless. It was only a matter of time before something went terribly wrong. Crack. Sure enough, one day the beaver was so busy chewing on a tree that he failed to notice it was falling in his direction. The beaver woke up in the hospital with a bent tail, two broken limbs, three cracked ribs, four big bruises, five sprained fingers, six twisted toes, seven little cuts, eight stinging scratches, nine sore muscles, and ten nasty slivers. He had spent his entire life chewing, swimming, and building. He had never sat still for a second. Now he could barely even scratch his nose. At first, all the beaver could do was stare at the ceiling, but little by little he began to heal. With lots of rest, he regained his strength, and before too long, he was trying out a pair of crutches. Eventually, the beaver was able to hobble over to the window. This was the first time he noticed his leaky dam, the mess of trees he had left half chewed, his friends' bandages, and a family of homeless birds. He realized he had a lot of work to do. The next day, the beaver embarked on a rigorous rehabilitation program. He got back on his feet, did lots of yoga, and lifted weights. While he was at it, the beaver caught up on some important reading and practiced saying, I'm sorry. Soon enough, he was ready to go home. Run for your lives. The beaver's friends were a little worried about his return to the forest, but despite their concerns, the beaver went straight to work. Before the beaver started his first project, he did a full tree inspection, checked to see if there were any animals in harm's way, and carried a frightened caterpillar to safety. Then the beaver went ahead and built the family of homeless birds a new nest. Next, the beaver apologized to his friends for being careless and causing so much damage. Sorry, guys. To show that he meant it, he made the bear a vase for his den. Thank you. And he built a canoe for the moose. Apology accepted. 
The beaver's final task was to clean up the mess he had made in the forest. He hauled off the trees he had left half-chewed, used the broken branches to fix his leaky dam, and planted saplings to replace the trees he had felled. With the forest back in order, everyone was happier, including the beaver. His work was done. The beaver got to thinking about what he might do next. He came up with lots of ideas as he got ready for bed that night. Maybe he would take a course on dam building, or start a band and go on tour, or take more naps. The beaver liked this idea the best. Being busy doing good work was exhausting. With a yawn, the beaver laid his head down on a soft bed of leaves and fell right to sleep. All that was left for the beaver to do was dream. The end. All right, so at the end of this book, there's actually a quiz that goes along with it. So we are gonna answer some questions together. So on your paper, let's go ahead and write the name of the book, Busy Beaver. Go ahead and write that down. And then go ahead and put a one for question one. And that's where you're gonna put your answer. You don't have to write the question, okay? Just the answer. So number one is asking us, what was a sign that the beaver was careless? That his dam was leaking, he fully chewed trees, or his hair was messy? Hmm. And remember, careless. What do you think careless means? What's a sign that the beaver was careless? Careless usually means that somebody didn't put either a lot of effort into something or didn't think about the possible outcomes. So maybe they did something, but they didn't try really hard. So maybe something bad happened as an effect to that. So which of these things was a careless thing for the beaver to do? What was a sign that the beaver was careless? His dams leaked, he fully chewed trees, his hair was messy. So although your hair might look a little messy when you're being careless, I think that the answer is his dams leaked. So for one, go ahead and put his dams leaked. And that means that when he was building his walls of wood, that he didn't try hard enough and they were letting a lot of water through when they're not supposed to let water in at all. So they were leaking when they weren't supposed to because he was very careless when he was building them. All right, so number two. How did Beaver apologize to Bear? Hmm. Gave him a vase for his den? Said sorry? Or built him a new home? What did the beaver do to apologize to Bear? Now, I do remember the beaver saying sorry to the moose and the bear, but for the bear specifically, he did this one thing just for the bear, and that was he gave him a vase for his den. So that's what the beaver did to show that he was apologizing to the bear. Gave him a vase for his den. All right, question number three. How did Bear say sorry to Moose? All right, so we're moving on from the bear now and thinking about what the beaver did um, to show that he was sorry to the moose. So which of these three things did he do to say that he was sorry? Built him a home, gave him a canoe, or planted new trees? What did the beaver do to show the moose that he was sorry? Hmm. Did he give him a new home? Did he build him a canoe? Or did he plant a bunch of trees for the moose? He gave him a canoe. So number three is gave him a canoe. All right, question number four. Listen carefully. Which of the following did Beaver not do when rehabilitating? Weightlifting, read, yoga, or brush his teeth? Which of those things did he not do when he was trying to recover from being hurt? Hmm, did he brush his teeth? 
I don't remember him brushing his teeth, but I do remember him reading a book and doing some yoga. So I think the answer for this is brush his teeth. Number four is brush his teeth. All right, question number five. Beaver was so hurt that he could only do what? Look at the ceiling, use crutches, or regain strength. He was so hurt that he could only do which of these things? Use crutches, regain strength, or look at the ceiling. Hmm, I remember that he was so hurt that he couldn't really do anything at all. And when you're just laying there in the bed doing nothing, you're just looking at the ceiling, right? All right, so problem number five, the answer is look at the ceiling. That's all he could do. And our last question from this quiz, number six says, when did Beaver realize that he had caused some real damage? When the tree fell on him? When he chewed in Moose's legs? as he looked out the hospital window into the forest, or when the tree fell on the bear? When did Beaver realize that he had caused so much trouble around? Do y'all remember when he was hurt? I know it was after he got hurt, right? Because he didn't realize a lot of things as he was doing it before. But when he was in a lot of pain in the hospital, don't y'all remember him looking out the window? That's when he realized everything, right? So number six is, as he looked out the hospital window into the forest. So we can just put, as he looked out the window, as he looked out the window for number six. All right, so this is a bonus question. There's actually two bonus questions. Okay, one bonus question, and you can write bonus on your paper. And our first bonus question is, who was the main character? So who was the main character? And I'm going to let you answer this all by yourself. Who was the main character? And then you can write it down. Just sound out the word if you need to. Or you can ask a parent how to spell something. So your first bonus question that I want you to do all by yourself is who was the main character? And that should be for number one under your bonus section. Now your second question I want you to answer, number two in your bonus section, is what was the setting? Where were they? Where was the bear, the moose, and the beaver? Where were they? Do you remember? So be very specific. Don't just tell me inside or outside. You gotta tell me where. Where were they? All right, so remember, your job is to answer those two questions. What's the main character, or who's the main character, and what is the setting of the whole story? All right, so great job guys. Make sure you put your name on your paper, take a picture of it as soon as you're done, and then send it to me. All right, thanks guys.